Hello. Hi. And welcome to Wheel Take, a podcast about the Wheel of Time series, typically. But right now we're going to talk about the Hunger Games. I'm Allie and my voice is nearly gone because I went to something called Jordan Con. And now I'm recording <laughs> against my will. The, you insisted that we record this. I did do that. I did do that. I, I, did I do. suggested we kick I it back. I did, did do that. <laughs> you silly. I'm funny. I'm Gus. Uh, I have never. I have. How, how much oh, of the yeah. book have I read? Um, this is Gus. And how much of the book have you read? I am a first time reader of the Hunger Games. I uh, I know I wasn't supposed to do this, but I finished the first book. Yes, I couldn't. I couldn't make him stop. It was too exciting. She, I was having too much fun. He she gave was having me the too much eyes. fun. I'm weak. I let him finish because I was like, "All right." There the really internet was like, "Please let him finish it. We want I to hear asked what he thinks." The Discord. Would you or would you not like me to let Gus finish the books? Should I let him suffer? And they chose weakness. <laughs> And let him finish. But I did write like a dissertation of my thoughts. He did, and he at will the be point reading where you those. Wanted me to so stop. we will consider this our finale episode for yes. uh, book one. So parts one and two. So this episode contains spoilers for all of book one. So all of the Hunger Games. If you are not done with book one, go finish. Come back. Hear what Gus thinks. Gus. Yes. Where did we leave off? We left off when uh, the, what the fuck is his name? Uh, Captain Phasma, Crocus, Dickhead, C- uh, Compton, uh, Compton, Plasma Radio. What is his name? His name? The I'm not sure who you talk oh. The announcer. Oh, what's his face? Capitalism Perambulation. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck is his name? It's not Caesar Flickman. That's the other one. Claudius Temple Smith. Claudius Temple Smith. Capitalism perambulation was like actually two people can win, and I w- I went bullshit. No, they can't, and I was right about that and wrong about some other stuff. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, you know what else I was right about? What by accident? Uh, Remember when I said Foxface is gonna die to human error? The like. Face I had to fight from breaking to the service when you said that was wild. You also saying that you thought Clove was going to die during the the feast. feast. I said Clove was going to die during the feast. You I nailed said, that one. I said uh, Thresh was going to save Katniss and or Peta. You really one of the killed careers. that as well. I got a lot of things right, and I I was. So close, but so far away from how they would resolve not both being able to win. I forgot about the poison. Yes, the poison. The poison, the poison for, to, Cus- yeah. for Cusco. Cusco's poison. That poison? Yes, that poison. You know what I was thinking to myself? What? Fuck, I don't know where we left off, so I hope Gus does. I do. I never have to I remember. Do. Yeah, we left off at the end of part two, and we pick up at the top of part three. This is, this is, this is true. I don't remember what I have notes for again, because I read this a little while ago. Uh, and then we went to Jordan Con, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we met some of you all, and it was awesome. And thanks for saying hi. But let me see, because I was reading frantically. Although I did, again, take notes between where I was supposed to stop. And oh, I took a bunch of notes. Okay, this is great. Uh, so we jump into chapter 19, and my notes there are, PETA, it turns out, has never been a danger to me. I just don't think this book is going for the strong, smart man knew what was best for me all along, you know? And, like, we weren't really. No. But also... (laughs) He doesn't even know what a poison berry looks like. No. But also, he was just a nice guy. He's just a nice guy. And I'm not upset about that. In fact, like, I finished the book, and I had to go outside and just kind of, like, stare at the clouds for a while, because, holy shit... Did this book fuck me? Like, she finished the games. Suzanne. She won the games. And then everything got worse. Yes. Somehow everything after she gets out of the uh, the arena is worse than the kids killing each other. Yes. Not by a little bit. It's so much worse. Yes. And like, all of the twists and turns that I thought were going to be there, she... She didn't have to do any of them. You know what? You know what's um, really helpful what? at this time? It gets worse. Good. <laughs> this is so fun for me. Okay. 
But wait, I, I just need to talk about this a little bit more. Uh-huh. I put all these twists in my predictions, like Pete is a bad guy, Rue is the flayer, you know, uh, etc., etc. beloved and incredible oh, no. theories. I don't regret any of them. I put all of them in there because I expected that she would have to be like, well, yes, you know, evil, hegemonic, capitalist empire, yes. But also, let's let's... Have a little fun with it. Let's play it. No, no, no. <laughs> no, Suze is not here for fun. Suze is here for, I am going to show you exactly where I'm going to stab you. And I went, you're not going to stab me there. What are you going to do? Stab me? And then she just walks up to me and stabs me. She, <laughs> she telegraphs everything. It's very clear what it's going to be. And, and then all of, all of it happens. And it's all so much more painful even though I thought I knew what it was. Even <laughs> I had to prevent myself from going like, Suze isn't trying to trick you. She's not going for shock value. She's going for dread. Doesn't need to. Yeah, she's going for, isn't this horrible? Isn't this, isn't this just horrible? the worst thing you've ever heard? Isn't this the worst? Isn't this awful? Isn't capitalism bad? So bad. So bad. You know what else is great anti-capitalist propaganda? The Grinch movie? The, the live action Jim Carrey, How Gr- the Grinch yeah. Stole Christmas. Yeah. It's my. It might be my favorite Christmas movie. It just gets better every year. Gus watched it like paying attention for the first time this year. It was this year, right? Because I always watch it every year, but I don't think you've ever paid attention or been around for it. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, um, but this year you actually watched it with your attention eyes, and you were like. Holy shit, this movie's actually really good. Anyway. It's a good so movie. Same thing here. It's like, you know what? You know what's late stage capitalism sucks. Well, you know what's what's annoying to me is that people look at the Hunger Games and they're like, that's for teenage girls. And as we know, teenage girls are annoying and everything they like is annoying. And actually, I find that some of the stuff marketed toward teenage girls is some of the best stuff out there. Is this in part because you're reading A Court of Thorns and Roses right now and you're are you trying to call me out right now on this part? Why would it be a call out? I'm really enjoying it's not a myself. Call out. I'm, I'm really saying. I'm myself. saying is some of this because you you know I it's didn't maligned. I realize it was marketed at teenagers. It's not. It's not. It wasn't written for. Te- to my understanding, it was not initially written for teenagers. But her publisher or something was like, oh, we could make it, you know, accessible to youth. It's a little risque for you. Yes, to my understanding, as the series goes on, they drop the youth label entirely. It's not really. It's it's actually quite contentious to say whether or not it's aimed towards youth. But some of the popular con- popular opinion of the series is that it's for you know youth because youth. it's fantasy and it was it's written fantasy by a woman. And it was written by a woman. Yes, nah. we can't. We're not allowed to write anything that's not for children. Don't you know that, guys? Because <laughs> women and the nurturing. Anyway, fuck off. Uh, not you. The I, world. I understand. Anyway, uh, wait. I have more notes. Oh, please tell us. Ah, no. It, Gus has a habit sometimes of just deciding I'm going to lean my whole oh, body sorry. weight into my elbow, which just happens to be resting on Ali's sorry. very sensitive knee. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, oh, duh. The camouflage thing. I forgot about that. Nobody sent him first aid. I think that like Haymitch was like, I put my whole Haymitchus hey, into that fucking burn ointment. She, well, then he sends them 400 pounds of stew. Well, yeah, because they were starting to make out. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. You know, I think that the, n- the narrative at that point was like maybe Peta was betraying Katniss, and so you know maybe they weren't willing to send him stuff. Yeah, so I dramatically underestimated how fucked up Peta was. So it's like oh, I got cut. Whatever, he's fine. It's probably just like oh, he was so a fucked. gash along. No, Cato really clocked him. Hamish hasn't sent Peta anything. Do I believe that? I probably believe that. No, Katniss, let him finish the confession. Don't kiss him. Oh, fine. Kiss him. See if I care. <laughs> Are you resentful of Katniss's kiss? I have a lot of, like, clearly Sue's meant for me to have a lot of feelings about this. Oh, you think Sue's wants you to have feelings about the fact that the thing that's so innocent as a first kiss is being corrupted yes, by capitalism? It's the worst thing. In a good way, it's the worst thing I've ever read. It's awful, and I hated everything about it, and I want to send her a gold medal. A gold medal? Because it was so terrible, so clearly terrible in such a good way. You know what one of the best parts about Suze as a writer is? Hmm? I'm pretty sure that she has no social media, and she just fucks off into the woods. God bless her. I know. Isn't that wonderful? Like, she doesn't talk about anything, and I love her for it. She just is like, here's my anti-capitalist stuff. 
um, written for youths. Now I'm going to fuck off into the woods. I just, I love her. Anyway, now someone's going to message me and be like, actually, she lives in a city and here's her Twitter handle. I wasn't here for facts. <laughs> Are you done? I'm looking up Suzanne Collins Twitter. She does have a Twitter. God damn it, Suzanne. Oh, it's not her. It's someone else. Oh, thank God. It's a different Suzanne Collins, I think. Yeah, she does not have a Twitter. God bless her. Wait, maybe? I can't tell. Oh, I probably shouldn't Google anything. Why okay. are you Googling anything well, about you, the Hunger you Games? you let me. You, I let you do what? You sat right next to me and watched me Google Suzanne Collins. Oh, I let you Google Suzanne Collins. I didn't say, oh, click on the Hunger Games Reddit. Well, I, I backed out of it as soon as I saw that it was the Hunger Games Reddit. Well, I was about to be like, what are you doing? I'm not doing it now. Oh, my God. I've, I've, I've stopped. Oh my God! You were such a novice first-time reader. Yes, yes. This Jesus is my this is my Lord. fifth. Episode. I'm barely allowed on the internet. That's true. Ugh, and I haven't been for three years. I don't know what's happening. Is dabbing still cool? <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Yes. <clears throat> I clap my. Wait. Did I finish my notes? Did I didn't you? finish my. Wait. Hold on. Did you? Did I? Did <clears throat> I? Yes, I did. Go ahead. And did you want to read the dissertation that you had? I figured I'd do that when we got there. Oh, okay. We're not there yet. <clears throat> I clap my hands over my mouth, but the sound has already escaped. The sky goes black and I hear a chorus of frogs begin to sing. Stupid, I tell myself. What a stupid thing to do. I wait, frozen, for the woods to come alive with assailants. Then I remember there's almost no one left. Fuck. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Peter, who's been wounded, is now my ally. Uh, whatever doubts I've had about him dissipate, because if either of us took the other's life now, we'd be pariahs when we return to District 12. Well, that's true. Yes. Good on you for not doing that. They'd be like, fuck you, you didn't have to kill her. You could have been chill. And again, at this point, I was like, there has to be a twist. He can't just be a nice boy. A nice boy who's actually interested in keeping her alive, and maybe they could have <laughs> something, but now they can't. Ever, it's, because it's tainted forever. <laughs> There's nothing, it, 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 never. And I'm part letting, of the problem. It's letting, I'm part of the problem because I bought into the doubt and the doubt is all that, you doubt it and then all of a sudden, even if it happens, then could it be, maybe it's... Mm. Are you enjoying yourself? I'm having a wonderful time. <laughs> I really love first time reader Gus. He's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. I have never been happier. Well, you know, initially we're uh, leaning into your usual instinct, which was fuck men. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, sometimes is the correct instinct. Yeah. And sometimes they're sweet, doughy bread boys. I don't trust him, but now I do. But you now I don't know if I should later. Ugh. Why? What would he do to her now? I don't know. It's all ruined. It's all ruined? In a good way. Are you distressed? Yes. Oh. 10 out of 10. Five stars. Loving it. Emotional pain Having everywhere. Having a horrible time. Would recommend. <laughs> All right. Nothing could have prepared me for this. Bring your kids. <laughs> Bring your kids. In fact, I know if I was watching, I'd loathe any tribute who didn't immediately ally with their district partner. Yes. Besides, it just makes sense to protect each other. And in my case, being one of the star-crossed lovers from District 12, it's an absolute requirement if I want any more help from the sympathetic sponsors. So good thing you screamed his name. PETA! Whoa. Yeah, I mean, yes, actually, as we learn later. Yeah. This gave her a really good excuse. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, that's when I knew I loved him and all this other... And he doesn't... He doesn't know she's acting. Jesus Christ. Everything that happened... Like, I understand that the next eight ish chapters are thrilling and exciting i can't think about anything but how awful in a good way everything that happens after the game's end is i can't are. wait to discuss it are everything that happens after the game ends is is yeah okay go ahead thank god you said we're on page people one were rushing to the keyboard all right <clears throat> i just probably were actually <laughs> i just finished a book uh called the devil in the dark water by a guy named Stuart turton and who we call Stuart tewart yeah and i highly recommend everything this guy has written but this is a book that takes place on a boat in the late 1600s and at the end of the book he's like hey don't tell people this is historical fiction or like a novel about boats because then I get emails that are like, actually, that's not what a mizzenmast is. 
And unless you're emailing me these things because they're cool, I don't care. No, guys. Yes. Mm. Who recommended you the Stuart you, Tour? You did. You recommended me both Stuart Tourt novels. I recommended you both of the Stuart Tourts. And they were both very good. Because I can never remember his last name, so I Turton. called him Stuart Tourt. Turton. I refuse to believe that. It, he is Stuart Tourt. Turton. Is Stuart the Tourt. Okay. But yeah, I recommended it to you, and then it was hilarious, because I was like, you never read anything I recommend, which was true prior to this podcast. <laughs> That's not, no, nah. it's not true. I'm just teasing. It's not true. But then he says to me, you don't read anything I recommend you either. And I had to remind him that I am three years in to, to a book podcast yes. that we started because he recommended the Wheel of Time series, which, if I recall correctly, is 15 books. So it until is, including the prequel, 15 books. Starting today, until he reads 15 books that I recommend him, he cannot complain. You know, Ryan was <laughs> pitching uh, uh, the Malazan series to you quite hard. You, you see, you I see will all those read books the Malazan series Wheel when you Time's have over read there. 15 books that I have recommended you. Uh, okay. Starting today, because I know you've written what, read that, others that, that before. Stuart Tour doesn't count. You finished Stuart Tour today. Well, I, Stuart I Tour also read count. the other Stuart Tour. Fine, the two Stuart. And Tours. I read the Family Upstairs. No, that doesn't count. What? That's too far what about away. the Hunger Games? All right, the hung- all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, wait, it's too far away. The other Stuart Tour book I read four days after I read the Family Upstairs. I, I put Heavens my deadline where I put. Okay, fine. You are you have six books. Those are the six that you get. But then I get to add uh, subdivision. Sub, I love sub. I, yeah. So sixteen books now. Ah, okay. <laughs> and those are all the books I can remember that. You also read the Echo Wife, didn't you? What was the Echo Wife? The Echo, the book. I don't talk too much about it. It's about this clones in it. I haven't read that one. You haven't yet. read that one yet? No. Oh, well, you should. I will read it. After you read the <laughs> books that I recommend. All right, we're on page one and we're tw- like 15 minutes in. The star-crossed lovers. Peter must be, have been playing that angle all along. Why else would the game makers have made this unprecedented change in the rules? It's not an angle, Katniss. You know it's maybe, the truth. Maybe Hamish, You were more strategic than I thought. Maybe Hamish was putting his whole hamish into <laughs> making that happen. Oh, yeah. Probably. Like, how much money do you think that they threw at it until they made this decision? <coughs> For two tributes to a shot at winning, our romance must be so popular with the audience that condemning it would be jeopardi- would jeopardize the success of the games. No thanks to me. All I've done is manage not to kill PETA. Mm. But whatever he's done in the arena, he must have the audience convinced it was to keep me alive. Shaking his head to keep me from running to the cornucopia, fighting Cato to let me escape, even hooking up with the careers must have been a move to protect me. PETA, it turns out, has never been a danger to me. Feel bad, Katniss. Feel bad, Gus. Yeah, exactly. I don't trust this fucking bread-ass motherfucker over here. So who is there left to be afraid of? Foxface? No. The boy... <laughs> the boy... <laughs> no. So dismissive. What is she gonna do? I just love that Foxface lives in red free cat as said this whole time and is never a real actual threat to like them. accidentally die in your camp and give you dysentery what's gonna happen <laughs> oh no plague from the corpse the boy from her district is dead she's operating alone at night and her strategy has been to evade not attack i don't really think that even if she heard my voice she'd do anything but hope someone else would kill me I, I mean, if you think about it in Survivor, like, if there are power couples, you want to take them out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, if I were Foxface, I'd, te- I'd try to team up with Thresh. Yeah, that's what I said last week, isn't it? Or not last week, two weeks ago. Yeah. If I were Foxface and I'm, like, the only one left, yeah, I would team up with be Thresh. Like, hey, bud. And be like, hey. They're gonna They're gonna, they're gonna fucking kill us. <laughs> uh, and th- then there's Thresh. All right, he's a district threat. But I haven't seen him, not once since the games began. I think about how Foxface grew alarmed when she heard a sound at the sight of the explosion. But she didn't turn to the woods. She turned to whatever lies across from it. To that area of the arena that drops off into I don't know what. I feel almost certain that the person she ran from was Thresh, and that is his domain. He'd never have heard me from there, and even if he did, I'm up too high for someone his size to reach. Yes. So that leaves Cato and the girl from District 2, who are now surely celebrating the new rule. They're the only ones left who benefit from it besides PETA and myself. Do I run from them now on the chance they heard me call PETA's name? No, I think. Let them come. 
let them come with their night vision glasses and their heavy branch breaking bodies right into the range of my arrows. But I know they won't. If they didn't come in daylight to my fire, they won't risk what could be another trap at night. When they come, it will be on their own terms, not because I've let them know my whereabouts. Mm. Stay put and get some sleep, Katniss. I instruct myself, although I wish I could start tracking Peter now. Tomorrow, you'll find him. Okay. So, the next morning, she's super duper cautious. She's like, fuck, I don't want to run into the careers. They might not, ha- they might hesitate to attack me, but they might also be capable of setting an ambush. I mean, let's be honest. They have been training from this since they were, for this since they were children. You know, they are, they've been trained to be soldiers from the time they were cutting their teeth. Probably. They literally cut their teeth on battle. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you biting me? What is this? You're cutting no, your teeth. I'm snorting. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it was so stupid. Anyway. Um, so she's trying to think if anything that Peta has said in the past would give her an idea of where he might be, but she doesn't know. Remember when he was like, I, I, I like cakes. I'm a frosty man. Frosty the peat boy. Frosty the beat boy. (laughs) That's what he sings to himself when he's frosting the cakes. Frosty the beat boy wishes he could eat this cake. Oh, no. (laughs) Let him eat cake. No. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So then she thinks, okay, well, he has to be near water because he couldn't survive without it. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe you can't, but I'm an alien. You, you, you have to bring multiple hydration packs with you every time you get on a plane. I have pot. I'm, I'm not blaming you for this. You just, I'm just pointing out. You, Probably. You, you I don't know out, yet. Came out swinging here with who needs water. And I'm like, you very I much do. So bad. You need more than most people. I know. I can't know because my body's so broken. I probably can't actually absorb water without salt. <laughs> oh, bodies are broken. Okay. Um. So, yeah, she's like, and he can't have gone far because he was stabbed and also filled with venom. Yeah. Yeah, definitely true. So she's thinking about all the water sources near the base camp. Um, there's a few spring-fed pools, but you'd really be a sitting duck at one of those. And the stream, the one that leads from the camp ruin I made all the way down near the lake and beyond. If he stuck to the stream, he could change his location and always be near water. That's smart. I heard that when you're lost in the woods, you should do that. You should just follow a stream. Is usually, like, or follow water. Is usually, like, human, if you can find one. Is usually humanity is somewhere usually around water sources. That makes sense. Because we need it to survive. Yeah, so we're well, not you, it. apparently. You're fine, I guess. Well, I, I need it You can it go with... 17 days without a, even thinking about water. <laughs> I was just joking. I know. I'm, I'm also joking. <laughs> but I need it so much. <laughs> I get so dehydrated. Um, but so she's like, uh, but, 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 yeah. But I heard that when you're in the woods, you should follow water. You should follow the river. Um, Because usually that will lead to some kind of uh, civilization. So survival tip for me, someone who would never be in the woods anyway. Have you ever camped in a tent? I've never camped. (laughs) Wait, hold on. The tent that had a bed in it does not count. uh, I camped in, in a glamping ground. That does not count. And I have camped in an RV. That that does not count. Well, then I'm gonna no. gatekeep camping, I guess. Yeah, this is very condescending to what my camping comforts are. You know what? You're right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You you like- haven't camped until you've pissed off the side of a glacier in negative three hundred degree <laughs> wind on the moons of Jupiter, and only then can you call yourself a Cub Scout. Okay. <laughs> oh my God! Could you imagine they have like five year olds in the tundra? <laughs> They're like, be a real man. And they're like, I'm seven. Like, Listen, I, I grew up in fucking... Will you mute your phone? My God. What kind of a podcaster are you? <laughs> it's D. 
digging up a storm Apparently over here. Apparently it's Raz Alley Day. <laughs> Razzing away. I love raz, you. Raz, Raz, Raz. Raz, Raz, Raz. I, I grew up in Michigan and I was in the Boy Scouts and, uh, at, you know, at 11 years old in Michigan, you, for, for, we would have a camp out every every month, including January and February and March. So, you know, it's 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 mid February and we're trucking out into the Michigan forests, setting up tents in the snow. I don't know why we did this shit. It was it was terrible. Wouldn't recommend that. No, that sounds horrid. I would I would not go. I would not go. And if my child was like, Ma- mother, I wish to camp, I'd be like, oh, sounds like a good problem for dad. All right, we're, we're nearly at ad break time. And what page? We're on the third page of the... Will you? That is I blame myself entirely talking. for this. Let's actually take a quick break for a couple ads. Welcome back. Sorry, Allie. Please continue. So, People she go- starts a fire to try to ch- uh, with a lot of green wood. And what does green wood do? Camper expert smoke. Yes, it smokes so that hopefully the careers and shit while she's tracking Peter will think that she's near a fire. Yeah. Um, and she's tempted to call out Peter's name, but that would be fucking dumb. Probably shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> could you imagine Peter? And everyone's like, girl. Uh, like everyone who gave her that eleven is like, oh fuck. <laughs> now we look like ass hats. Um, so she's looking for him on the riverbank, and she sees a bloody streak going down the curve of a boulder. Whoa! It's long dried now, but the smeary lines running side to side suggest someone who perhaps was not fully in control of his mental faculties. Tried to wipe it away. His blood on the rocks of this campsite. Not good. <laughs> so she moves slowly in the direction of the blood, searching for him. She finds more blood stains with a few threads of fabric glued to it, but no signs of life. She, I sit, break down and say his name in a hushed voice. Peter! Peter! Then a mockingjay lands on a scruffy tree and begins to mimic my tone, so Peter! I stop. Peter! Peter! Beautiful. Peter! That's just what I assume they sound like. <laughs> Beautiful. Peter! Yeah. And then everyone around and then everyone around is like and then everyone around is like, oh, is this bee looking for Peter? Better go find him. Serve him up with some shawarma. <laughs> um so she gives up and climbs down the stream. My foot has just broken the surface of the water when I hear a voice. You here to finish me off, sweetheart? That's funny. Sexual. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. They're children. <laughs> I'm I'm not saying for me. I'm mm-hmm. saying for them. Anyway. Yeah, I know. I whip around. It's come from the left, so I can't pick it up very well. And the voice was hoarse and weak. Still, it must have been PETA. Who else in the arena would call me sweetheart? I, I mean, anybody could. <laughs> I, I call people sweetheart all the time. Usually it's because I can't remember their name. Usually not when you're trying to kill them. Why not? I could be called the sweetheart killer. Could do. Brand myself. Could be. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> my eyes peruse the bank, but there's nothing. Just mud, the plants, the base of the rocks. Beta, I whisper. Where are you? Your poor voice is so gone. You <laughs> poor know, thing. I'm trying so hard to be a good audiobook narrator when oh. I cannot fucking talk. You're doing a great job, and I'm really proud of you. <laughs> oh, so, wait, wait, mimic for me what I sounded. Beta, where are you? <laughs> Yeah. Which is probably what she sounds like, actually. So you're right on the fucking money. Yeah, probably. This is great. I was trying to go for whisper. Yeah, no, but yeah. I'm already whispering. Yeah. Um, Peter, I creep along the bank. Just don't step on me. I jump back. His voice was right under my feet. Still, there's nothing. Then his eyes open. Could you imagine? The ground suddenly has eyeballs. Unmistaken, uh, unmistakably blue in the brown mud and green leaves. I gasp, and I'm rewarded with a white hint of teeth. A bu- white hint of teeth, Jesus Christ. I gasp, and I'm rewarded with a hint of white teeth as he laughs. Um, so she camouflaged. Um, forget chucking weights around. P- 
Peter should have gone into his private session with the game makers and painted himself into a tree or a boulder <laughs> or a muddy bank full of weeds. Well, no, he would have told her because he is he has no guile after all for her. I thought he had guile. I mean, he has guile in some ways. Not for her. He's guileless. <laughs> guileless when it comes to Katniss. Because he loves her. Yes. Apparently, that's true. I guess all those hours decorating cakes paid off. Peter smiles. Yes. Frosting. Frosty the, final... the Pete boy. <laughs> so dumb, but it's so <laughs> funny. Um, I yeah. would make that the episode title, but I want... I, never mind. You want it to be a surprise? I want to, that sounds pretentious. Yes. <laughs> that sounds pretentious. Yeah. Okay. Peter smiles. Yes, Frosting, the final defense of the dying. You're not going to... <laughs> I, I was trying to read that joke and he kept making funny jokes. So I Sorry. I'm not getting to make I this needed joke. to learn how to shut the fuck up. Go no, ahead. no. Gus, the point is not for me to make this into an audio yes, book. Yes, it is. No, no. The point is for you to give me your takes, your theories, and your quips. All right, go, go on. You're not going to die, I tell him firmly. Says who? His voice is so ragged, like he's been screaming at Jordan Con uh, at the Jordan Con party. <laughs> Says me. We're on the same team now, you know? I tell him. So I heard. Nice of you to find what's left of me. Did Cato cut you? Left leg up high. Near my bits. Anyway. What? He's <laughs> <laughs> playing a little careless whisper for them. Beautiful. Yeah. Ugh, I just thought about the fact that when you watch The Hunger Games, they probably put music behind it and shit. I want to walk into the ocean. Am I wrong? No, you're right. I'm definitely right, especially when they do the compilations. It's not just like quiet breathing and shit. They definitely no. like, they definitely put audio and shit behind everything. We were talking, we said people definitely mm -hmm. like cosplay in the Capitol, their favorite uh, tributes. Oh my god, do you think they put the... Oh, they definitely do. And do you think they put clown music behind some of the people oh, who died? Oh god, yeah, they absolutely like, put the clown, the clown music. you know the clown music? There is a particular uh, track on Survivor, or remix and, of tracks. And The Bachelor has And The Bachelor, has and Big too. Brother, and every reality show has this. And you you would know it if you heard it. And we always call it clown music. Mm -hmm. And it's whenever a, a, a player on these games is doing something real dumb, or that they have edited to look... Real dumb. I'm looking to see if I can find it. I'll I'll, I'll find it. I'll, I'll link it in the description. Can't find it. You find it later. I'll find it. <clears throat> but yeah, it's basically like it makes them sound really dumb. And they like play it under them talking about their plan when the plan is really dumb. Um, lean down a minute first. Need to tell you something. I lean over and put my good ear to his lips, which tickle as he whispers, remember, we're madly in love. So it's all right to kiss me anytime you feel like it. This was kind of funny. Yeah. It is kind of cute until it's not. Yeah. Like his, his, I think he keeps, he, he, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and she thinks it's funny and he's being funny, you know, because you know what? Keep them laughing. Keep them laughing even while you're dying. It's nice to see that someone else has the same kind of dark humor as I do. Um... Then she says, I'm going to roll you into the stream, you know, not because it's necessary, but because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't go so hot. Um, also, his fucking thigh is hanging from a thread. Yeah, pretty much. So she tries to roll him in and he makes such an agonizing sound that she has to stop. And um, yeah, there's only one full roll. So now he's basically on his face. It's a little funny. Yeah, they're probably putting some clown music under it. Yeah, probably. Fuck that. Fuck them. Um, so they're try she's trying to get him cleaned up. She can't even see his clothes if he's wearing clothes. The thought makes me hesitate a moment, but then I plunge in. Naked bodies are no big deal in the arena, right? Apparently not if they would dress up the District 12 tributes in coal dust. Yeah, <laughs> with nothing else on. Again, they're fucking children. Gross. So, he's got four tracker jacker stings and a long burn across his chest. Um, but she's like, okay, at least I can fix that much. Um, 
But she like washes him. It's all very tender and sweet. And then applies the burn cream to his chest and notices that he's burning with fever. Yes. Which is never good. No. Uh, but she digs through the first aid to the first aid kit that she got from the boy from District 1 in the cornucopia. Right? Uh, no, no, no. The, the, he, oh, Marvel, uh, Marvel. Marvel, because she, she shot him in the fucking neck. Mm -hmm. And find pills that reduce your temperature. My mother actually breaks down and buys these on occasion when her home remedies fail. Um, and he swallows them, and then she ta she gets his pants off. But not in a fun not way. A yeah, yeah. I can see the tear Kato sword made in the fabric over his thigh, but it in no way prepares me. Excuse me. But it in no way prepares me for what lies underneath. The deep inflamed gash oozing both blood and pus. You don't want that. Ooh. Okay. If, if if anything is oozing, oozing on the outside of word. your body, that's probably bad. The swelling of the, the leg, and worst of all, the smell of flat, festering flesh. No. So, yeah. She wants to run away, but she has to say, like she did when they brought the burn victim to our house. Go hunt while my mother and Prim attend to what I have neither the skill nor the courage to face. But there's no one here but me. I try to capture the calm demeanor my mother assumes when handling particularly bad cases. Um, <clears throat> and she kind of plays it off like it's no big deal. And she's going to clean it. She says, why don't we give it some air and then, and then you'll patch it up? He looks almost sorry for me, as if he knows how lost I am. That's right. In the meantime, you can eat these. I put a few dried pear halves in his hand and go back in the stream to wash the rest of his clothes. When they're flattened out and drying, I examine the contents of the first aid kit. It's pretty basic stuff. Bandages, fever pills, medicine to calm stomachs. Nothing of the caliber I'll need to treat PETA. We're going to have to experiment some. <clears throat> Rub some dirt on... Oh, you did that. Hmm. Oh, this is gross. I know the tracker jacker leaves draw out infection, so I start with those. Within minutes of pressing the handful of chewed up green stuff into the wound, could you imagine Prim watching and be like, that's going to kill him There you faster. go, girly. Don't do that. <clears throat> Pus begins running down the side of his leg. I mean, that is a good sign. Is it? I don't know anything about medicine. Pus, uh, if a wound is, okay, this is gross. To my understanding, I am not a doctor. If, if there is pus in a wound, there is infection in the wound. Okay. The pus leaving the wound means that the infection is being expunged. Okay, that's good. Like, All right, well, ideally, you want there to be no pus, but pus is essentially the graveyard of uh, bacteria and white blood cells. Okay. It's just a bunch of dead stuff. So pu pus means that you're fighting an infection. Usually, you're losing it if there's a lot of pus, because like a zit with pus in it is essentially... Bacteria got trapped under your skin, and then your immune system fought it off, and it could not get rid of anything, <laughs> so it all just accumulated. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about pus. <laughs> Say pus again. Pus. <laughs> so Katniss, like, is grossed out by the pus, and it's obvious. Yeah, pus is, you know, <clears throat> pus. And he says, how do you hunt? Trust me, killing things is much easier than this. Although for all I know, I'm killing you. Can you speed it up a little? No, shut up and eat your pears. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and then Peter says that Hamish hasn't sent him anything. Why, did you get something? Burn medicine, I say almost sheepishly. Oh, and some bread. I always knew you were his favorite. Please, he can't stand being in the same room with me because you're just alike. Hmm. No, she lets him sleep a little bit, <clears throat> but she tells him that they gotta go downstream because they want to she wants to hide him somewhere more safe smart because you know i love you Peta. apparently but bury myself in mud at the edge of a stream this is not the big brain play you think it is why do you feel that way what is the edge of a stream people will come fucking deer could step on you get you right in the ball <laughs> they definitely would play clown music over that yeah I don't know. What? And that's when they step on the ball. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so she finds a cave and it's like, perfect. This is where we got to go. But Peta's paper white pant and panting. And even though it's only just cooling off, he's shivering. Always a good sign. No. Um, and he's refusing to eat. That's not good. What? Not eating. So Peta looks at her and says, Katniss, thanks for finding me. You would have found me if you could. Yes. Look, if I don't make it back, don't talk like that. I didn't drain all that pus for nothing. <laughs> I know, but just in case I don't... No, Peta, I don't even want to discuss it. But I... Impulsively, I lean forward and kiss him, stopping his words. This is probably overdue anyway, since he's right. We are supposed to be madly in love. It's the first time I've ever kissed a boy, which should make some sort of hap impression, I guess. But all I can register is how unnaturally hot his lips are from the fever. I break away and pull the edge of the sleeping bag around, up around him. You're not going to die. I forbid it, all right? All right, he whispers. See, I thought he was going to be like, Katniss, if I die, I want you to know I was trying to kill you all along. Mm -hmm. And I regret it. But no, it was going to be something cute. Nah. I step out in the cool evening air just as the parachute floats down from the sky. My fingers quickly undo the tie, hoping for some real medicine to treat Peter's leg. Instead, I find a pot of hot broth. Yum. Image couldn't be sending me a clearer message. One kiss equals one pot of broth. And this is when my face kind of twisted up into a, oh, no. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no. And I posted something to the effect of, I hate that Haymitch is doing this. And all the Haymitch defenders rushed to their keyboards, rightly so, because I worded it badly. And I had to go, let me rephrase. I hate that Haymitch knows that he has to do this. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, <clears throat> uh, I can almost hear his snarl. You're supposed to be in love, sweetheart. The boy's dying. Give me something I can work with. And he's right. If I want to keep Peta alive, I've got to give the audience something more to care about. Star-crossed lovers desperate to get home together. Two hearts beating as one. Romance. Never having been in love, this is going to be a real trick. I think of my parents, the way my father never failed to bring her gifts from the woods, the way my mother's face would light up at the sound of his boots at the door, the way she almost stopped living when he died. Peta, I say, trying for the special tone that my mother used only with my father. He's dozed off again, but I kiss him awake, which seems to startle him. Then he smiles as if he'd be happy to lie there gazing at me forever. He's great at this stuff. She thinks he's faking it. No, it's it's so much worse than that. I know. It's just... Uh, uh. I hold up the pot. Peta, look what Hamish has sent you. I'm gonna cry. Oh, my God. No, it's... It's worse now that you know it's that it's worse real oh for him. Oh, my God. And he God. doesn't know it's a fake from her. Oh, it's horrible. It's all horrible, isn't it? It's horrible. And you want me to make you feel a little better? What? It gets worse. Yeah, it gets yeah, worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, and that is the end of chapter 19. It is. Let's break for ads. Chapter 20, Gus. Do you have any notes? I do, yes. For us. All right. <clears throat> Did I get them out? No. Aha! Now you see. It's not always easy to remember to get your notes out. Is it? Chapter 20, LMFAO, she calls Peta's mother the witch. I mean, if someone was like, I She's don't right, care, yeah. I won't throw burned bread to a girl, to an 11 year old who's starving, I'd call her a lot worse than a witch. Am I right? Yeah. Gail on suicide watch. <laughs> oh, you think Gail loves her? Do you now? <laughs> I think that she has enough confused feelings about both of them that it's, it's go as good as. Uh-huh. He has fucking blood poisoning. It's not great. Everything was already bad, and now it's terrible. Gus, you have no idea. You have no idea. Thanks for the opium, Hamish. Yeah, for real. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Getting the broth into PETA takes an hour of coaxing, begging, threatening, and yes kissing mm. but finally sip by sip he empties the pot all right so she she feeds him the broth um she doesn't feel like she can go look for food 
Be, uh, on, oh, she can't. She can't really like nest in a tree or anything. Yeah, because he can't get up. Because he can't get up there, and she can't leave him unguarded there. So she decides to keep watch instead because she can't really obscure the the location. He's got a fever. That's not good. No. Objectively bad. Everything's objectively terrible. It's called the Hunger Games for a reason. Yes. But then the fever breaks. Yay. Yay. We did it. That's a good sign. Yeah, very. Um, then she comes upon a bush of ruse berries, strips off the fruit, and mashes it up in the broth pot with cold water. Not to be confused with the berries that will kill you, <laughs> which look which very similar, Fox but not Face quite. Fucks around and finds out with in a bit. Very soon. And this this chapter is mostly... Her nursing him back to health. I think. Yeah, it's 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 a and like and all of the horrifically uncomfortable performative intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying horrifically uncomfortable that they are playing at being you know in love or that she is playing at being in love, but horrifically uncomfortable in that all through this the subtext, not even the subtext, the literal text is: if you don't do this, we'll just let you die. And you need to do this whether you like it or not. Yeah. So, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the brilliant thing, I think, is that we're just showing how much is corrupted by this gross system that they're a part of. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, ev nothing is sacred. Nothing is innocent. It's Everything all so is fucking bad. For show. For... <clears throat> For something bigger, and I think Suzanne Collins is doing that totes on purpose. Oh, a hundred percent. That's the thing too is I think it, it it is very it would be very easy, and our our good uh, writer friend Bree, who I think has already come up on Hunger Games episodes, uh, we were talking about this, and she said, "Yeah, I think something that a lot of Suze's contemporaries or mimics misunderstood in their writing of contemp of of similar things was that this is not supposed to be sweet." No. It, it has all the hallmarks of being sweet. Yeah. It looks sweet on the surface, but everything about it is terrible. It's gross. And it should be gross. Yeah, and it's, I think, It should I make think, us feel squicky. Yeah, I think it's very much meant to be gross. It's very much meant to make me extraordinarily uncomfortable. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Everything about this is supposed to be uncomfortable. Especially, I feel like, the series gets more and more disturbing the older you get. Oh my god, yeah. You know, the more you're like separated from the age that this is supposed to be happening the more you're like this is awful whoa jesus suzanne just drop this anti-capitalist shit right into our laps thank you we'll gobble it straight the fuck up um but yeah <clears throat> as you said uh she pita has blood poisoning there's like red marks traveling up his legs i didn't know that's what blood poisoning looks like no i didn't either is it? I trust Suzanne. Yeah. Blue, gray, pale, or uh, it's sepsis. Is it sepsis? No. It is sepsis. Oh. Bacteremia, septicemia, or sepsis. Yeah, it's sepsis. Shit. Uh, it's, yeah, that's yeah, a really serious, yeah. serious, serious thing. Bacteria in the bloodstream. Um. So she asks um, Peta if she's ever told him the story of how she got Prim's goat. But she can't really say the full oh, true story. Oh, yeah, this because... whole thing. I'd kind of forgotten about this. Yep. Most of this chapter is her telling this story, right? Mm-hmm. Where she, like, she she gets a... a what did she get? Deer? Mm-hmm. She, she gets a deer. She kills a deer in the woods. And she drags it back, and she sells it to the someone. But then the story she tells is that she, like, took one of her mom's pieces of jewelry and trades it for a goat. It's this... Oh, yeah, of course. It's this scrawny young goat yeah. that, like, somebody else was going to buy, and the, the, the butcher or whoever was selling it is like, you can't have it, I'm selling it to so-and-so, and so-and-so -and -so comes up and is like, I'm not buying that fucking thing. It's like Dying. one cough away from death. Yeah. And, and Katniss is like, well, I'll buy it. And then she buys it, and of course... Prim nurses it back to... Did you say... Yeah, Prim, I keep mixing up Rue and Prim because god damn it. Yeah, sometimes I accidentally call yeah. them Prue. <laughs> and Prim, like, nurses it back to health. And the, Excuse me, I'm so sorry. I'm drinking a sparkling water. 
Uh, and then they 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 get milk. For, it's this whole sweet thing. <coughs> yeah. Um. It took them about half an hour to agree on the price. Um, and it was a great deal if the goat lived. Gail carried the goat home for them. And Prim was able to... Uh, Prim was, like, so excited she started crying and laughing. Oh, yeah, it was injured. And uh, they wanted to... And she nursed it back to health. And Peter says, they sound like you. Oh, no, Peta, they work magic. That thing couldn't have died if it tried. She's like, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying Maybe you're going to fucking die. Ooh. And then he said, don't worry, I'm not trying. <laughs> Finish the story. Good of him. Um, And Prim apparently insisted on sleeping with Lady on a blanket next to the fire. This is me. Yep. I'm obsessed with animals. Um, And Katniss says, well, I knew that goat would be a little gold mine. Yes, of course, I was referring to that. Not the lasting joy you gave the sister you love so much you took her place in the reaping. <laughs> the goat has paid for itself several times over. Well, it wouldn't dare do anything else after you saved its life. I intend to do the same thing. Really? What did you cost me again? A lot of trouble. Don't worry. You'll get it all back. Um, He's a little cooler in the forehead. And there's a sound of trumpets. It's my new best friend, Claudius Templesmith. And Capitalism as I, perambulator. And as I expected, he's inviting us to a feast. Crumping, uh, persnickety man. And he says, now hold on. Some of you may already be declining my invitation, but this is no ordinary feast. Each of you needs something. That's desperately. True. That's true. Each of you will find that something in a backpack marked with your district number at the cornucopia at dawn. Think hard about refusing to show up. For some of you, this will be your last chance. He's talking about PETA. Yup. I also wonder what the other people need, desperately. Well, Kato gets armor. No, 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 what Foxface gets. Uh, her bag is bigger, I think. I'm wondering if she gets, like, a weapon or something. Yeah, like, it could Because be. it seems like she doesn't have anything to arm herself and the other ones do. Yeah, and we don't know what, uh... Thresh gets. That's a good question. <coughs> yeah. I just, I have always wondered that because I don't think they ever answer that question. So No, not that well, apart from the armor. No. Which is bullshit, by the way, but okay. Total bullshit. Total bullshit. It, it, uh, arrow blocking armor. Fuck that. Come on now. Well, I guess that is what he needs badly. Yeah, it is, but it's like... Here is something that will prevent your teammate from wasting away to death versus here is something that nullifies your opponent's entire battle plan. Huh? I don't know. I mean, if Pete is back to health, I mean, he and Kato are pretty similarly strong. Yeah, true. I don't know. Uh, Pete grips my shoulder from behind. No, you're not risking your life for me. Who said I was? So you're not going? Ooh, sneaky. And then she... Oh, yeah. She... she get He, he, he airdrops in... Uh, sleeping medication, and she knocks Peter the fuck out. Uh, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, he, he airdrops her like sleeping pills. It's a liquid sleeping something, and she's like, "Oh, this will help Peter sleep." And then she's like, "Oh, wait a minute, this will help Peter sleep." Mm -hmm. And then the next day, she's like, "Hey, bud, here's a little more." Is it, they get the stew first. I forget who uh, the stew first. So or hold not. on, hold on. Before okay. we get there. She says, give me some credit. Do you think I'm running straight into some free-for-all against Kato and Clove and well, you Thresh? Almost Don't be did stupid. That at the fucking uh, cornucopia, girl. I'll let them fight it out. We'll see who's in the sky tomorrow night and work out a plan from there. You're such a bad liar, Katniss. Yes. I don't know how you've survived this long. Um, she says, all right, I am going, and you can't stop me. I can follow you, at least part way. I may not make it to the cornucopia, but if I'm yelling your name, I bet someone can find me, and then I'll be dead for sure. Uh, uh. So he says, you go, I'm going to. No, you can't move. You can't walk. You can barely crawl. Yeah, and he promises her that he won't die, which is bullshit, because he has blood poisoning. Um, yep, she goes down to the stream... I'm so lost in thought that I almost miss the parachute, even though it floats right by me. That's then so I spring funny. after it, yanking it from the water, tearing off the silver fabric to retrieve the vial. Hamish has done it. He's gotten the medicine. I don't know how. 
persuaded some gaggle of romantic fools to sell their jewels, and I can save Peta. No. It's such a tiny vial, though. It must be very strong to cure someone as ill it's as Peta. It's just Valium. A ripple of doubt runs through me. I uncork the vial and take a deep sniff. My spirits fall at the sickly sweet scent. Just to be sure, I place a drop on the tip of my tongue. There's no question. It's sleep syrup. It's a common medicine in District 12. Cheap as medicine goes, but very addictive. So it's opium. Uh, probably. Um, a vial this size could knock Pita out for a full day. But what good is that? I'm so furious I'm about to throw Hamish's last offering into the stream when well, it hits don't me. don't do that. A full day? That's more than I need. Mm-hmm. Um... So she matches up some berries and adds some mint leaves to hide the taste. Um, so, yeah, she's giving him sleeping medicine and she's lying to him. And he says, they're sweet as syrup. He says, taking the last spoonful syrup. His eyes widen as he realizes Wait the truth. Wait a minute. I've been duped. I clamp my hand over his mouth and nose hard, forcing him to swallow instead of spit. He tries to make himself vomit the stuff up, but it's too late. He's already losing consciousness. Even as he fades away, I can see in his eyes what I've done is unforgivable. Oh, it'll be fine. It, it Look, this is results-oriented thinking, but it's fine. I wipe it away. Oh, a stray berry stains his chin, and I wipe it away. Who can't lie, Peta? I say, even though he can't hear me. It doesn't matter. The rest of Pan Am can. It's so deliberate and so intentional and so awful. <coughs> She's like, yeah, everything I'm doing right now, I'm doing for the cameras. And that is the end of chapter 20. Ugh. Chapter 21, Gus. In the midst of the remaining hours before nightfall, I gather I rocks. I do have some notes, Allie. Thank you for asking me. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. I love you. Foxface remains the most fascinating opponent here. Well, Gus, buckle up. The wording of the no what? The wording of the no throw absolutely made for a moment. What? What am made I? Made me think for a moment that Cadness fucking died. The yeah, something happened. The oh, the knife throw. The wording of the knife throw absolutely made me think for a moment that Cadness fucking died because the the phrasing is like the knife hit me in the forehead, and I was like, oh, well, how do we move on from this? <laughs> Then I went, Susan. no, wait, that didn't happen. I think it happened at the very end of the page, too. Yeah, let's fucking go, Thresh. Get her. And then I wrote, oh, well, man, watching Kato beg Clove not to die is actually incredibly sad. Yup. Because even when... I think I, I did say last time, it, whatever happens, it's not going to be, like, satisfying for, for Kato to die. Yeah. And it wasn't. No. None of, no. The only, like, kind of satisfying death, and even that one wasn't very satisfying, was Marvel. And I'm not suggesting they should be satisfying. I don't think they should be. But I guess if you're going to kill somebody in a satisfying way, it should be the guy who deliberately captures and then guts the 12-year-old. Yeah. I mean, he kind of sounds like he sucked. But he's a victim he's a of victim a larger... Sur he's been brainwashed since maybe he even he was an infant. Maybe they just picked the heaviest infant. Who knows? To do this. Um, they were like, this infant seems like a sociopath. Are you done with your notes? Uh, yes. Okay. In the remaining hours before nightfall, now that I can read... I gather rocks and do my best to camouflage the opening of the cave. It's a slow and arduous process, but after a lot of sweating and shifting things around, sweating and shifting. Beautiful. I'm pretty pleased with my work. Suzanne was not thinking about the podcasters when she wrote this. Why? Probably partially because that didn't exist. Yeah, okay. They did. Podcasts? Yeah. When I was in high school? Yes. I had never heard of what. Why do you think they're called podcasts? iPods? They were on iPods. Really? Yes, they're called podcasts because you would put them on your iPod. I was listening to podcasts when I was 13, 14. What? Yeah. I had never heard of them until I was like at least in college. Well, because that's because that's you were a cool kid and I was a nerd. I don't think. No, that is absolutely false. I was not a cool kid. I was a theater kid. Those kids are never the cool kid. You were a cool Unless theater kid. Unless you went kid. to art school, which you I were, did not. You were a cool theater kid. I didn't go to Catholic school, though. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Did you? Yes. Yeah. Um, I gather rocks and do my best to camouflage the opening. No, 
I already said that. The cave now appears to be part of a larger pile of rocks, like so many in the vicinity. I can still crawl into PETA through a small opening, but it's undetectable from the outside. That's good, because I'll need to share that sleeping bag again tonight, if you know what I mean. No. Um, also, if I don't make it back from the feast, PETA will be hidden, but not entirely imprisoned. That would be helpful. Yes. Here are some things I'm fairly certain of. That at least Cato, Clove, and Thresh will be on hand when the feast starts. I'm not sure about Foxface since direct confrontation isn't her style or her forte. She's, she's even smart. smaller than I am and unarmed, unless she's picked up some weapons recently. She hasn't. I bet that's what they have for her. A weapon, since so she's the only one without one. Yeah, probably. Then she never uses it. Mm -hmm. Unless she killed Thresh, she didn't. But I know I'll have to go right into the thick of things to get that backpack, the one with the number 12 on it that Claudius Templesmith mentioned. I watch the sky hoping for one less opponent at dawn, but nobody appears tonight. Tomorrow there will be faces up there. Feasts always result in fatalities. Two of them. A full third. Well, definitely Clove. Yeah, Thresh too. Thresh doesn't die at the feast. He dies as a result of the feast. He does die as the result of the feast. Um... She thinks about her family wa um, watching back home. My family can either watch on the static-filled old clunker of a television at home or join the crowds in the square to watch on that big, clear screen. They'll have privacy at home, but support in the square. People will give them a kind word, a bit of food if they can spare it. I wonder if the baker has sought them out, especially now that Peta and I are a team and made good on his promise to keep my sister's belly full. I hope so. Spirits must be running high in District 12. We so rarely have anyone to root for at this point in the games. Yeah, man, that would suck, wouldn't it? It's like, okay, here we go. It's the three-week watch all the kids die extravagance, and ours are gone on day two. Yeah. And she thinks about Gale watching. I wonder what he makes of all this kissing. He has given up. He totally likes her. You think so? He asked her to run away with him, and she was like, well, I don't think that'd be entirely run practical, away Gail. As friends. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go platonically live off the land with me? I want to go platonically live off the land with me. I like that. Um. So, yeah, she leaves... Well, she puts on the the night vision glasses and misses uh, having the use of my left ear. I don't know what the explosion did, but it damaged something deep and irreparable. Actually, it's not irreparable because the capital fixes it because they can just do that. Yeah, because they're the point zero zero one percent. They're assholes. Um, everything looks kind of different at night. <laughs> The arena has lightened enough for me to remove my glasses. I can hear the morning birds singing. Isn't it time? For a second, I'm panicked that I'm at the wrong location. But no, I'm certain I remember Claudius Templesmith specifying the cornucopia. And there it is. And here I am. So where's my feast? Just as the first ray of sun glints off the gold cornucopia, there's, just, there's a disturbance on the plain. The ground before the mouth of the horn splits in two, and a round table with a snowy white cloth rises into the arena. Had to be white. Because of blood. Yep. Right? It's going to look good. That's the visual the table, for you. sit four backpacks. Two large black ones with the numbers 2 and 11. A medium-sized green one with the number 5. And a tiny orange one. I really couldn't carry it. I really could carry it around my wrist. That must be marked with a 12. So little. He's it's a, just a it's little a, guy. He's a little guy. He's a little guy. Unfortunately, that does mean that she has to get closer to it. Yeah, well, you know. The table has clicked into place when a figure darts out of the cornucopia, snags the green backpack, and speeds off. See, that's clever. Fox face. Yeah. Very clever. She's clever. Go as soon as you can. She's very clever. <coughs> Leave it to her to come up with such a clever and risky idea. The rest of us are still poised around the plane, sizing up the situation, and she's got hers. She's got us trapped, too, because no one wants to chase her down. Not when their own pack sits so vulnerable on the table. She is really smart. Foxface must have purposely left the other packs alone, knowing that to steal one without her number would definitely bring on a pursuer. That should have been my strategy. By the time I've worked through the emotions of surprise, admiration, anger, jealousy, and frustration, I'm watching that red 
reddish mane of her hair disappear into the trees well out of the shooting range. Huh. I'm always dreading the others, but maybe Foxface is the real opponent here. You'd think. No. She's cost me time, too, because by now it's clear that I must get to the table next. Yeah. Anyone who beats me to it will easily scoop up my pack and be it's gone. It's so little, and so she just goes for it, right? Mm -hmm. Without hesitation, I sprint for the table. I can sense the emergence of danger before I see it. Fortunately, the first knife comes whizzing in on my right side so I can hear it, and I'm able to deflect it with my bow. I turn, drawing back the bowstring, and send an arrow straight at Chloe's heart. She turns just enough to avoid a fatal hit, but the point punctures her upper left arm. Got him. Unfortunately, she throws with all her might, but it's enough to slow her down a few moments. Having to pull the arrow from her arm, take, it, take in the severity of the wound... I keep moving, positioning the next arrow automatically, as only someone who has hunted for years can do. I'm at the table now, my fingers closing over the tiny orange backpack. My hand slips between the straps and I yank it up on my arm. It's really too small to fit on any other part of my anatomy, and I'm turning to fire again when the second knife catches me in the forehead. See, I read that and I was like, um, how, how do we go on from this? Yeah, it's because she it's turned and then she blow. turned. Yeah, 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 she turned. It slices above my right eyebrow, opening a gash that sends a gush running down my face, blinding my that. eye, filling my mouth with the sharp metallic taste of my own blood. I stagger backward, but still manage to send, and head wounds bleed. So much. And send my readied arrow in the general direction of my assailant. I know as it leaves my hands, I will miss. And then Clove slams into me, knocking me flat on my back, pinning my shoulders to the ground with her knees. This is it, I think, and hope for Prim's sake that it will be fast. But Clove needs to sever, means to savor the moment. Fortunately, Even feels she has time. No doubt Cato is somewhere nearby, guarding her, waiting for Thresh and possibly Peta. Where's your boyfriend, District 12? Still hanging on? It's a good voice. What? It's, I like it. It's good. He's out there now, hunting Cato. I snarl at her. Then I scream at the top of my lungs, Peta! Clove jams her fists into my windpipe, Ow. very effectively cutting off my voice, but her head's whipping from side to side, and I know for a moment she's at least considering I'm telling the truth. She's not. Since no PETA appears to save me, she turns back to me. Liar, she says with a grin. He's already dead. Cato knows where he cut him. You've probably got him strapped up in some tree while you try to keep his heart going. What's in that pretty little backpack? That medicine for lover boy? Too bad he'll never get it. So dramatic. So shitty. Chloe opens her jacket. It's lined with an impressive array of knives. Do you remember in Hercules when the guy opens Yay. his thing? He's like, want to buy a sundial? Yeah. That's Clove right now. Um, <clears throat> she carefully selects an almost dainty looking number with a cruel curved blade. I promised Cato to, if he let me have you, I'd give the audience a good show. Good Lord. I'm struggling now in an effort to unseat her, but it's no use. She's too heavy and her lock on me too tight. Forget it, District 12. We're going to kill you. Just like we did your pathetic little ally. Good thing you said that one. Mm. What was her name? The one who hopped around in the trees? Rue? Well, first Rue, then you. And then I think we'll just let nature take care of Leverboy. How does that sound? Now, where to start? She carelessly wipes away the blood from my wound with her jacket sleeve. For a moment, she surveys my face tilting it from side to side as if it's a block of wood, and she's deciding exactly what pattern to carve on it. I attempt to bite her hand, but she grabs the hair on top of my head, forcing me back to the ground. I think... I think we'll start with your mouth. No. I won't close my eyes. The comment about Rue has filled me with fury, enough fury, I think, to die with some dignity. As my last act of defiance, I will stare her down as long as I can see, which will probably not be an extended period of time, but I will stare her down. I will not cry out. I will die, in my own small way, undefeated. Yes, I don't think you'll have much use for your lips anymore. Want to blow Loverboy one last kiss? This is so fucked up, Clove. Like, think about it for a second. It's like, okay, yeah, if it's like, be ruthless and win, that's one thing. Why, why do we have to carve her face i have no idea but girl it does give us enough time to have thrush kill her so yeah it's handy but also what the fuck i work up a mouthful of blood and saliva and spit it in her face this is the right move. she flushes with rage all right then let's get started <coughs> i brace myself for the agony that's sure to follow but as i feel the tip open the first cut at my lip Ow. some great force yanks clove from my body and then she's screaming 
I'm too stunned at first, too unable to process what has happened. Has PETA somehow come to my rescue? No. Have the game maker sent some wild animal to add to the fun? Later. Oh, that's, that's good. That's, 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 that's sneaky. Sneaky mm-hmm. Suze. Well sneaky done. Sneaky Suze. Has a hovercraft inexplicably plucked her into the air? That would be hilarious. But when I push myself up on numb arms, I see it's none of the above. Clovis dangling a foot off the ground, imprisoned in Thresh's arms. I let out a gasp, seeing him like that, towering over me, holding Clove like a rag doll. I remember him as big, but he seems more massive, more powerful than I can even recall. Yeah. If anything, he seems to have gained weight in the arena. He is hiding. He's in hiding in the fucking the wheat fucking fields. wheat field. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he can just eat raw wheat, but <coughs> he's also a farmer. I bet he's doing fine, and nobody's going in there because it's a death trap. Mm-hmm. He flips Clove around and flings her onto the ground. Then he, sh- when he shouts, I jump, never having heard him speak above a murmur. What did you do to that little girl? You kill her? Clove is scrambling backward on all fours like a frantic insect, too shocked to even call for Cato. No, no, it wasn't me. You said her name. I heard you. You kill her. Scammer gets scammed. Scammer gets scammed. Goodbye. You cut her up like you're going to cut up this girl here? No, no, I... Clove sees the stone about the size of a small loaf of bread in Thresh's hand and loses it. Cato! Again, bread. Mm-hmm. Keeps coming up. She screeches, Cato! Clove! I hear Cato's answer, but he's too far away. I can tell that much to do her any good. What was he doing? Trying to get Foxface or Peta? Or had he been lying in wait for Thresh and just badly misjudged his location? Thresh brings the rock down hard against Clove's temple. It's not bleeding, but I can see the dent in her skull and I know she's a goner. Oh my god! Ugh! There's still life in her now, though. In the rapid rise and fall of her chest, the low moan escaping her lips. When Thresh whirls around on me, the rock raised, I know it's no good to run. And my bow is empty, the last loaded arrow having gone in Clove's direction. I'm trapped in the glare of his strange golden brown eyes. What did she mean? About Rue being your ally. I... I... We teamed up. Blew up the supplies. I tried to save her. I did, but he got there first. District 1. Maybe if he knows I helped Rue, he won't choose some slow, sadistic end for me. And you killed him? Yes, I killed him and buried her in flowers. And I sang her to sleep. Tears spring in my eyes. The tension, the fight goes out of me at the memory. And I'm overwhelmed by Rue and the pain in my head and my fear of Thresh and the moaning of the dying girl a few feet away. To sleep? To death. I sang until she died. Your district. They sent me bread. Do it fast, okay, Thresh? He lowers the rock and points at me, almost accusingly. Just this one time, I'll let you go. For the little girl. You and me. We're even then. Yeah. No more O, do you understand? I nod because I do understand. About owing. About hating it. I understand that if Thresh wins, he'll have to go back and face a district that has already broken all the rules to thank me, and he is breaking the rules to thank me too. And I understand that. For the moment, Thresh is not going to smash my skull. Clove! Cato's voice is much nearer now. I can tell by the pain in it that he's seen her on the ground. You better run now, fire girl, says Thresh. I don't need to be told twice. I flip over and my feet dig into the hard-packed earth as I run away from Thresh and Clove and the sound of Cato's voice. Only when I reach the woods do I turn back for an instant. Thresh and both large backpacks are vanishing over the edge of the plain into the area I've never seen. Fuck them up. Cato kneels beside Clove, spear in hand, begging her to stay with him. Oh, no, it's sad again. In a moment, he will realize it's futile. She can't be saved. I crash into the trees, repeatedly swiping away the blood that's pouring into my eye, fleeing like the wild, wounded creature I am. After a few minutes... I hear the cannon and I know that Clove has died and that Cato will be on one of our trails, either Thresh's or mine. I'm seized with terror, weak from my head wound, shaking. I load an arrow, but Cato can't, can throw that spear almost as far as I can shoot. Only one thing calms me down. Thresh has Cato's backpack containing the thing he needs desperately. If I had a bet, Cato headed out after Thresh, not me. Still, I don't slow down when I reach the water. I plunge right in, boots still on, and flounder downstream. I pull off Rue's socks that I've been using for gloves and press them into my forehead, trying to staunch the flow of blood, but they're soaked in minutes. Somehow I make it back to the cave. I squeeze through the rocks. In the dappled light, I put I pull the little orange backpack from my arm, cut open the clasp, and dump the contents on the ground. One slim box containing one hypodermic needle. 
Without hesitating, I jam the needle into Peter's arm and slowly pl- press down on the plunger. Hooray! My hands go to my head and, and then I drop to my and then drop to my lap, slick with blood. The last thing I remember is an exquisitely beautiful green and silver moth landing on the curve of my wrist. Gorgeous. And that is the end of chapter 21. And let's break for ads. Welcome back. I do actually have some notes for chapter 22. I am once again appreciating that Suzanne Collins is able to say this plot development is what would be expected by the audience and that is why it is happening. But can we maybe move on from all the kissing because I hate this. (laughs) Oh my God, it's just voyeurism. Oh my God, I hate the capital. Oh my God, this is terrible. 10 out of 10 would recommend. (laughs) I mean, that's the thing, right? You're like, I fucking hate this. I fucking love this. Uh, 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 uh. You stressing out, babe? I hate everything about this in a good, in a good way. In a good, in a good. I don't need the buzzer. You don't need the buzzer. No, I. Well, maybe one. Hold on. But the buzzer is not directed towards Suzanne Collins. This buzzer is directed towards the 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 capital. All right, thank you. Awesome. <coughs> chapter 22, Gus, do you have any notes? I just read them. For chapter 22? I just read them. No. Literally just now. That's why I played the buzzer. Oh, I see. Yeah. They were just really fast. Yeah. There were only two. Because mm-hmm. this whole thing is just the awful, 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 awful forced romance. I didn't realize you were reading your notes. Okay, my bad. No, you're good. Um... I want to reiterate this in case somebody misunderstands. This is great. It makes sense. It's upsetting. And it's supposed to be. And that's why I hate it. I think it is a wonderful thing to include. I think it is... There's so much in these books I'm realizing that is a meta-commentary on fame and what the public eye does to you. That's so true. And this is a big... This is where that first really showed up. For me, because yep. up till then it was like, oh, you know, I'll wave at them. I'll do this, that and the other. But now it's like you can't have a private moment. Nope. you can't. No, you, you cannot. simply you, you never and probably the two of you could basically never again Mm-mm. have a private moment in part because the foundational elements of your private moments started in public like this yep. in a performative way. Yep. At the end of this, when, you know, you're going off to Victor's village together, it's like, I don't fucking know. I will never know if I actually like you or not. Well, and think about it this way. If the two of them ever have children, do you think they're safe? No. No. Of course not. And do you think, I mean, the drama of having them picked. Yeah, they would actively want that, especially at the end of this. Like, I don't know if you can, I assume you cannot repick uh, uh, players for future seasons because that would be, because that would kind of go against the. Future seasons. That's what they are. I know. You know? But like what I what I assume, and this is I, I may be getting ahead of myself here. What I think is going to happen? No, I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, do you want me to kind of explain? I mean, they kind of have hinted at this a bunch, so I don't feel like it's a spoiler to explain a little bit about how being a victor works. You go to Victor's village, you get a bunch of money, you live by yourself, basically. Well, in District Twelve, you certainly do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, now they have Haymitch as a neighbor. Fun. Yeah, they joke about that. Always a good time. And it seems like I'm assuming there's like a publicity tour and then you have to come mm-hmm. back every year and coach people. Do you want to you there is a tour you go to every district? No. Oh, that's the worst thing I've ever. Well, that makes sense because they have to make remind everybody they're alive. Your kids aren't mm-hmm. hate each other, not us. Yeah, I won't say more about that, but they do make them go to every district. Horrendous. The Horrendous. Worst. The absolute worst shoes you wily mix. Yeah. Just kill us. I'll hold off on my predictions we're for catching already fire dead. until we're right. done. Yeah. But but that is a thing that you have to do. And then the rules are, yeah, you cannot get repeat picked. Yeah. And again, because I think if they just did Katniss goes back to the Hunger Games, that's kind of a repeat of the entire plot of book one. Uh-huh. And how many times can you do that? 
Right. You know, like if it were if it's a mix on the formula, that's one thing. But like you can't really mix the formula. Like I've told you, I would play the return of the Obra Dinn in a million different flavors. I absolutely would play that game a million different yeah, times. Yeah, if you haven't played The Return of the Obra Dinn, this is not a paid promotion. I mean, I think the only good... one you of the should. One of the good things about having ADHD is that, uh, you know, every couple months, I will forget how that game goes, and I can play it again. It's probably my favorite single video game. Yeah. Anyway, like I've said that I would play The Return of the Obra Dinn in a million different flavors. Right. But I... I can't play the return of the Obra Dinn several times because I already know how it goes. Yeah. You know, and if it's just Katniss goes back and does it again. I think Suze is a better writer than that. I think she's a better writer than that. Of course like, she is. Than like, oh, they pick Katniss again with like 12, like 12 brand new kids. No, that would be heinous. Yeah. She wouldn't have to fight 12 uh, or like how many kids do they pick? Uh, 23, 23 other brand new kids. Yeah. But like. What what I, I'm already talking about this. What I what I think will probably happen is they can't they could get to her. They could just disappear her, but then she might become a martyr. Um, but what they could do is double down on breaking her entirely and force you know rig it for Prim. Because mm. if they rig it for and then on top of that they make her go back as a coach. Mm. So she so I think what would be interesting about that is that then we would get um, we would get the perspective of the games from the casters perspective. We'd, we'd get we we'd kind of go up a level of meta commentary, mm. you know, and then and then Katniss has to be she is then again faced with the choice of how complicit am I? How complicit do I have to be in this? Because I don't want my sister to die. But I am still taking part in all of this. Because if she's forced... I mean, it's one thing to say, like, I'll sacrifice myself. Right? Like she does at the end of this. But then it's like, okay, will you sacrifice your sister? Say that one more time. Because it's one thing for her to go, I'll sacrifice myself. But it's another thing to go, okay, will you sacrifice your sister? Damn. Damn, oh my god, imagine her having to do what Haymitch has to do and, like, yeah. try to get her... Yeah, for like, for fundraise, Prim. Like, fu- try to fundraise for her yeah. and be likable. Especially because, like, Prim is objectively not as good a candidate. Not even close. Not even remotely close. All she would have going for her is, I'm the girl's sister and a good teammate. So do you think Prue would... Do- Prim. Do you think Prim would die? I hope not. I mean, I think that would be kind of a huge fucking bummer if prue died by the end of the series i think yeah i'd be you keep saying prue prim. oh my god prim i think it would be a colossal fucking bummer yeah it'd be a colossal uh, fucking bummer i think that would be rough because prim is katniss's hope and we already had rue die right and rue was the avatar for prim Right. Within the games. Uh-huh. So doing that again. Feels like a repeat Feels beat. like a repeat beat. Yeah. Feels like it might be despair for despair's sake. Totally. Which I, I like Suzanne Collins dishes out the despair, but she does it in a very deliberate way. Yeah. That would, seems like it would be kind of like an. Ex- yeah. I'm not saying it can't happen. I mean, listen, if Prim died, I mean, Katniss would like expect blowed like that would be so rough for her yeah it would be what interesting word choice that's well, all I mean, wouldn't she explode like, she, she was would. so upset she would explode yeah 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 that's what i'm saying yeah just just an interesting way to word that it uh, what i don't know it's just an interesting way to word that that's all <laughs> you know what happens what prune gets into the games she steps off of that friggin' platform. Blows the fuck Blows up. Blows the fuck up. Somebody, yeah, Dead shoves it right off. Ten minutes. That would be sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chapter twenty-two. <coughs> uh, the sound of rain drumming on the roof of our house gently pulls me toward consciousness. Um, I fight to return to sleep, though wrapped in a warm cocoon of blankets, safe at home. You're not at home. Anyway, um. My mother's hand strokes my cheek, and I don't push it away as I would in wakefulness, never wanting her to know how much I crave that gentle touch, how much I miss her even though I still don't trust her, 
and there's a voice, the wrong voice, not my mother's, and I'm scared. Okay, when I first read that, and I remember, I had like a small heart attack. I was like, the wrong voice. Oh, no, shit. No, it's just PETA. <laughs> it's just the sweet bread boy. Katniss. Not the sweet bread boy. Sweet breads are a different thing. It says, Katniss, can you hear me? My eyes open and the sense of security vanishes. I'm not home, not with my mother. I'm in a dim, chilly cave, my bare feet freezing despite the cover, the air tainted with the unmistakable smell of blood. Um, it's Peta. <clears throat> she asks how long she's been out. He says, I woke up yesterday evening and you were lying next to me in a very scary pool of blood. I think it stopped finally. Head but I wounds. wouldn't sit up or anything. They'll get you. And he's better. Whatever you shot in my, into my arm did the trick. By this morning, almost all the swelling in my leg was gone. You know, she's happy that he doesn't seem angry with her. He's all gentleness. <clears throat> um, and he ate a bunch without thinking about it. And it's well, you raining know, he outside. was recovering. It's fine. <clears throat> You're about to get a huge terrine of stew for all of the public-private affectioning you're going to be doing, and declarations of, I just, it makes me so uncomfortable. Yeah. He said, I wonder what brought on this storm. I mean, who's the target? Cato and Thresh, I say without thinking. Foxface will be in her den somewhere, and Clove, she cut me, and then, I know Clove's dead. I saw it in the sky last night. Did you kill her? No. Thresh broke her skull with a rock. Lucky he didn't catch you, too. He did, but he let me go. Then, of course, I have to tell him about things I've kept to myself because he was too sick to ask and I wasn't ready to relive anyway, like the explosion and my ear and Ruse dying and the boy from District 1 and the bread, all of which leads to what happened with Rush and how he's paying off a debt of sorts. He let you go because he didn't want to owe you anything? Asks Peta in disbelief. Yes, I wouldn't expect you to understand it. You've always had enough, but if you've lived in the seam... I wouldn't have to explain. But don't try. Obviously, I'm too dim to get it. I mean, it is kind of a bitchy thing to say. Y y well, yeah, but like, I get it. It's like the bread. How I never seem to get over owing you for that. The bread? What, from when we were kids? I think we can let that go. <laughs> I mean, you just brought me back from the dead. That is pretty funny. But you didn't know me. We had never even spoken Besides, it's the first gift that's always the hardest to pay back. I wouldn't even have been the here to do it if you hadn't helped me the then. Hardest. Baby, I know the first gift is the hardest. Um, why did you anyway? Why? You know why. Oh, it's tainted now. I even know. this does not survive. <laughs> uh. That was weirdly in sync. Yeah. Wow. Are we married? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, Ring is right here. So Cato and Thresh, huh? I guess it's too much to hope that they'll simultaneously destroy each other. <laughs> yes. I think we would like Thresh. I think he'd be our friend back in District 12. And let's hope Cato kills him so we don't have to. Look. Fuck. Is he wrong? No. They get very lucky in that. Really, he doesn't have to kill anybody, and she only kills, 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 Glimmer. Mm -hmm. Like, they come out of this pretty fucking clean. Yeah. Yes, I know she is responsible. She kills, I she's guess you could argue. She's responsible for two deaths. Yeah, she's responsible for two, and she straight up three. kills one. She's responsible for three deaths. Yeah. She straight up kills. One guy. Kato. But, like, that was a mercy kill. Yeah, and I... Oh, okay, yeah, Kato, she straight up kills Kato and Glimmer. Oh, and she straight up, no, she kill. okay, wait, no, Katniss actually kills four people if we're counting Glimmer. If we're counting the- Because it's the girl yeah, from yeah, two, yeah, yeah. the girl from one, Glimmer, Marvel, yeah. and Kato. Yeah. she's got. She kills four people. She kills all the careers, except for Clove. No, wait, yeah, all the, all the careers who make it out of the cornucopia, except Clove- how are you saying that? Cornucopia? Cornucopia. Cornucopia? How do you, how do you say it? Cornucopia. Cornucopia? Yes. It's spelled C-O-R-N-U. 
Cornucopia. 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 Yes, cornucopia. It's hard to say. Cornucopia. Well, English is a stupid language. It is the dumbest one. Our ancestors were dumb. I'm just kidding. Now I'm scared. Oh, wait mad. a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Cornucopia. Is Gus, is Gus wrong? Cornucopia. Gus oh, is wrong. Oh, couldn't have wait, happened wait, to a better let, guy. Let's check the British pronunciation. Cornucopia. Are you British? No. Okay, so I rest my case. Hold on. Cornucopia. Can I switch between them midway through? No, I can't. All right, cornucopia. That just feels weird. No, you know what feels weird? Cornucopia. What's the other thing I say that drives Cornu- you nuts? Absurd. Absurd. Well, that's just wrong. I've, I've accepted that. But you and Nick Offerman do it. Nick Offerman does it? Nick Offerman in Parks and Rec says absurd. Really? Hold on. Yes, I, I distinctly remember this because it this was This is right- another American-British thing, isn't it? American is... Absurd. What, what happened? happened? Not- absurd. <laughs> Hold on one more time. Absurd. <laughs> Google, you good? All right, wait. No, it's not even. Google's going absurd. through... Absurd. British is also... I'm just wrong. Uh, right. Google's going through puberty, apparently. Absurd. Or it's me reacting to anything. <laughs> well, people are like... People are like, oh, which moments do you think are going to make Gus's voice crack? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, Pete asks, where... Oh, um, no, my bad. Katniss asks Pete, where did Thresh go? I mean, what's on the far side of the circle? A field. As far as you can see, it's full of grass as high as my shoulders. I don't know. Maybe some of them are grain. There are patches of different colors, but there are no paths. I bet some of them are grain. I bet Thresh knows which ones, too. Did you go in there? No. Nobody really wanted to track Thresh down in the grass. It has a sinister feeling to it. Every time I look at that field, all I can think are hidden things. Snakes and rabid animals and quicksand. There could be anything in there. Fair. Fair. Maybe there's a bread bush in that field. Maybe that's why Thrush looks better fed now than when we started the games. What the fuck is a bread bush? He's just joking. I know, but... <clears throat> Either that or he's got very generous sponsors. I wonder what we'd have to do to get Hamish to send us some bread. Fuck. No. N- no. No, Allie. You know what you get for that? You know what you yourself get? There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Just but she later. literally thinks to herself... Yes, she I says. I raised my eyebrows isn't before enough. I remember. I know he doesn't know about the message Hamish sent us a couple of nights ago. One kiss equals one pot of broth. It's not the sort of thing I can blurt out either. To say my thoughts aloud would be tipping off the audience that the romance has been fabricated to play on their sympathies, and that would result in no food at all. Yeah. And is this where they do like this? Somehow, believably, I've got to get things back on track. Something simple to start with. I reach out and take his hand. Well, he probably used up a lot of resources helping me knock you out, I say mischievously. Yeah, about that, says Peta, entwining his fingers in mine. Don't try something like that again. If they were alone, I would. this would be so sweet. Or what? Or, or, just give me a minute. What's the problem? I say with a grin. The problem is we're both still alive, which only reinforces the idea in your mind that you did the right thing. I did do the right thing. No, just don't, Katniss. Don't die for me. You won't be doing me any favors, all right? Maybe I did it for myself, Peta. Did you ever think of that? Maybe you aren't the only one who who worries about what it would be like if... If what, Katniss? I wish I could pull the shutters closed, blocking out this moment from the prying eyes of Pan Am. Uh. Even if it means losing food. Whatever I'm feeling, it's no one's business but mine. That's exactly the kind of topic Hamish told me to steer clear of. Then I'll just have to fill in the blanks myself. See, he's a smooth, and he's actually just smooth. I thought he was smooth and deceptive because yeah. I don't usually trust Because she, smooth when man. she says that evasive thing, she uh, she says, although Hamish never said anything of the kind. In fact, he's probably cursing me out right now for dropping the ball during such an emotionally charged moment that Peter somehow catches it. Um, so he kisses, Pita kisses her. This is the first kiss we're both fully aware of. Neither of us hobbled by sickness or pain or simply unconsciousness. Our lips neither burning with fever or icy cold. This is the first kiss where I actually feel stirring inside my chest. Warm and curious. This is the first kiss that makes me want another. But I don't get it. Well, I do get a second kiss. 
but it's just a light one on the tip of my nose because Pete has been distracted because her wound is bleeding again. And then they cuddle, and it and would be cute, cuddle. but it's not. And it, uh... I know, I remember you turning to me and being like, this is so creepy. <laughs> when you remember everyone's watching them. I just constantly think about, like, how awkward it would be to have your whole district watch you mac on someone else. Mm-hmm. And what, what they, they, he asks her, how, how do they get the stew? I forgot. Uh, we're getting there, I think. Oh, uh, when did you have a crush on me? Right, okay. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not really sure how to ramp up the romance. The kiss last night was nice, but working up to another will take some forethought. There are girls in the seam, some of the merchant girls too, who navigate these waters so easily, but I've never had much time or use for it. Anyway, just a kiss isn't enough anymore, clearly, because if it was, we'd have gotten food last night. My instincts tell me Hamish isn't just looking for physical affection. He wants something more personal. The sort of stuff he was trying to get me to tell about myself when we were practicing for the interview. I'm rotten at it. But Pete is not. Maybe the best approach is to get him talking. You know, I wonder if partially Clove was like, let me take my time because that's how they're getting supplies and food. Like if oh, that's a great point. Put on a good show. Yeah, let me play the She said, villain. I promised Cato I'd put on a good show. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, because you'd think like the sponsors sign up for the careers because they're, you know, friggin' careers. Yeah. So like, we want to see some violence. Yeah. Which, you know. And Clove will be vivisecting people with capital brand number one <laughs> medical scalpels. Watch her remove Katniss's tonsils. You know, like I bet when they killed the girl, I get what I, I bet if they do like particular kills in particular ways. Oh, yeah. They get rewarded for it. Yeah. I'm rotten at it, but Pete is not affection. Yes, because he actually feels it. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe the best approach is to get him talking. Pete, you said at the interview you'd had a crush on me forever. When did forever start? And we will get the answer to that question right after these ads. Wow. Speaking of sponsors. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Um, or maybe it didn't play ads because it seems like it doesn't a lot of the time. Apparently not every time. Yeah. Oh, let's see. I guess the first day of school, we were five. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you had on a red plaid dress and your hair. It was in two braids instead of one. My father pointed you out when we were waiting to line up. Your father? Why? He said, see that little girl? I wanted to marry her mother, but she ran off with a coal miner. What? You're making that up. No, true story. And I said, a coal miner? Why did she want a coal miner if she could have had you? And he said, because when he sings, even the birds stop to listen. Oh. My. God. That's true. They do. I mean, they did. So that day in music assembly, the teacher asked who knew the valley song. Your hand shot right up in the air. She stood you up on a stool and had you sing it for us. And I swear every bird outside the windows fell silent. Oh, please. No, it happened. And right when your song ended, I knew, just like your mother, I was a goner. And for the next 11 years, I tried to work up the nerve to talk to you. <coughs> Without success. Without success. So in a way, my name being drawn in the reaping was a real piece of luck. This is the saddest thing I've ever read. Is the, the For a moment, I'm fo almost foolishly happy, and then confusion sweeps over me, because we're supposed to be making this stuff up, playing it being in love, not actually being in love. But Peter's story has a ring of truth to it. That part about my father and the birds, and I did sing the first day of school, although I don't remember the song, and that red plaid dress. There was one... A hand-me-down to Prim that got washed into rags after my father's death. It would explain another thing, too. Why Peta took a beating to give me the bread on that awful hollow day. So if those details are true, could it all be true? You have a remarkable memory. I remember everything about you. Uh, You're the one who wasn't paying attention. She'll never know if she actually loves him. They can never be. It's ruined. It's all ru You are right there, baby? No. 
No, you're not all right. No, it's sad. No. You're the one who wasn't paying attention. I am. Now, well, I don't have much competition here. <laughs> That's he funny. He's really funny. He's funny as fuck. I want to draw away to close those shutters again, but I know I can't. It's as if I can hear Hamish whispering in my ear, say it, say it. <laughs> <laughs> I swallow hard and get the words out. You don't have much competition anywhere. And this time it's me who leans in. Our lips have just barely touched when the clunk outside made us jump. My bow comes up, the arrow ready to fly, but there's no other sound. Pete appears through the rocks and then gives a whoop before I can stop him. He's out in the rain and handing something in to me. A silver parachute attached to a basket. I rip it open at once and inside there's a feast. Fresh rolls, goat cheese, apples. Oh. And best of all, a terrine of that incredible lamb stew on wild rice. The very dish I told Caesar Flickerman was the most impressive thing the capital had to offer. I guess Hamish finally got tired of watching us starve. I guess so. But in my head I can hear Hamish's smug, if slightly exasperated words. Yes, that's what I'm looking for, sweetheart. And I think we'll stop it there. I, I, the, 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 the editing will cut this out, but I, I just kind of stared into the middle distance for about 10 seconds. <laughs> there was an abyss that just opened up in front of you. I'm falling into a hole very slow, but it's, just, it's just like a small hole, and I'm just getting dragged slowly down it deeper. I like this book a lot. <laughs> it makes me feel things. <laughs> that I didn't expect to feel from this book. It's a really good series. It's very sneaky, and I'm sad. I'm sorry you're sad. No, it's good. It's a good sad. A good sad? Yes. But hey, you know what'll make me feel better? What? Watching you try to do the outro again. <laughs> Shut up. I love you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. This has been Wheel Takes. We have a Twitter. Yeah. We have a Patreon if you want to support us that way. Yeah. We have an Instagram. We have a merch store. We do. We have um, a lot of other information. Yep. That is included in the episode descriptions below. Yes. Look at you. You're crushing it. And anything else, Gus? See, not so easy, is it? No, it never has been. Is love real? They'll never know. Oh. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.